Hello and welcome to the Sustainability 100 Plus platform. I am Priyanka Ayer. As the AB InBev and Network 18 Sustainability 100 Plus bandwagon continues its journey in its second edition in our quest to highlight some of the best practices and opportunities from states across India, we have arrived in Telangana in 2022 as well. This session is particularly focused on startups that are making a dent in the state, especially in sustainability businesses. What really inspired all three of you to really think differently? What is the problem that you set out to solve? Uh, Shalini, if you can start, because you know, uh, Sanshodhan focuses on ESG impact as well. What is it that you think was that you wanted to solve first? In 2018, along with the government of Telangana, I launched uh, an e-waste exchange, tech-based model uh, for uh, businesses and citizens to channelize their electronic waste directly to the recyclers. So this model was continuing and was serving the citizens and businesses. Uh, we also realized in 2021 somewhere that recyclers are not very open for taking the recyclable resources from the citizens. And mostly the businesses are busy with their policy compliances. So in January 2022, uh, we have also launched a special wing completely uh, mm -hmm. focusing on ESG impact assessment and us really with the problems that Maru drones is solving when it comes to afforestation, uh, agriculture, using drones in agriculture in a sustainable way, tech is really contributing to agriculture and other world problems that we have at this point. When there is a deforestation is happening at a rapid scale, uh, and when pe uh, people are unable to go, where we could use these drones, uh, use these drones wherever there's a deforest area, plant them and monitor the, the height, growth, and more of the species or plant count kind of the analytics. So basically, we brought the technology based, uh, the reforestation at a scale. Um, uh, and we launched a campaign called Hara Bahara, uh, where we're planting 1 billion trees by 2030 using drones. Uh, the uniqueness is we get the seed balls by local community, like NGOs, self-help groups, and tribals. And we we identified deforest areas and use these drones for the planting um, there. And post that, we give the analytics interface to for them to understand the survival rate or the more of uh, the um, the plant count and species count of a thing in, in afforestation. Jans, you know, as you pointed out, uh, you know, you have come together with AB and Bev because we are in a hyper connected world. The problems are similar is you know collaboration the way forward to really solve these problems and figure out different ways to look at each problem the way it is impacted uh, and really work on the innovation there i think it's essential and and i think what's been really fantastic is avian bev have taken the lead here so they've gone out and said look we we know we have certain things we want to solve within our business and we know we can't do it alone so what they've done is they've created the 100 plus accelerate program that we were part of in 2018 and said look you know, global startups, you know, you can, you're doing some fantastic things out there. And these are the problems that we're facing. Let's get together and see if we can solve them together. And they put their money where their mouth is and they've invested and, and, and kind of co cooperated with these companies and kind of took them to their market. So for us, Kiss and Up, we were taken to the Indian region um, to start kind of deploying our solution there. And we've seen real great benefits of, of doing so. But to be perfectly frank and, and to answer your question, you know, we couldn't have done that without collaboration. Um, and I think that works both ways. And I think AB and Bev are, are kind of a leader in that in that regard. Clearly, sustainability can be given an impetus through technology. Coming together, collaboration is the key and a lot more space for improvement. Thank you. Please stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this interesting and rather important dialogue, which is part of the Sustainability 100 Plus platform presented by EB and Bev and Network 18 in a strategic partnership. We believe in fostering one ideology. The ideology is together for a better future. And what better way to discuss this than to discuss it through players, makers of India's youngest state, that is Telangana. I'm going to begin with you, uh, Jay Shranjan. SDGs, as we keep talking about, it's about having a fresh perspective and innovation. And Telangana increasingly is becoming a state where innovation has taken up a new form. Yes, Maria. First of all, uh, 
thank you very much for uh, putting together this show and uh, inviting us to share our state's perspectives. You are absolutely correct that in the last eight years of its existence, Telangana has been creating ripples in the world of innovation, things which people would talk about only for the Silicon Valley, etc., are now also spoken in the same breath in our country. And the reference point is of Telangana, is of Hyderabad, how we have su succeeded in creating world-class institutions like the T-Hub, the V-Hub. While the government has played the fundamental role in visualizing an institution like the T-Hub, putting money where our mouth is in building the beautiful facility of T-Hub, but the entire operations of T-Hub are run in a PPP board. And uh, there is one other critical element of the partnership, which is the academia. So, for example, when people talk about Silicon Valley, if you go back in time and look at the early days of Silicon Valley, the real impetus come from, came from institutions like the University of Stanford, the University of Berkeley. Right. We have more or less emulated the same model. So, ISB, Triple IT Hyderabad, Nalsar Hyderabad, these are the founding institutions of, uh, of uh, uh, T-Hub. We also have brought in lots of corporate partners. In fact, there are more than three dozen corporates who participate in innovation programs. They tell us about their pain points, their challenges, which we try to solve or co-create along with the corporates using uh, T-Hub as a medium. And after a while, after T-Hub was well established, we have created another institution which looks at uh, innovation, which is happening at the grassroots. In fact, uh, when we speak about the problem of the common people, we also notice, particularly in our state of Telangana, that there are lots of locally available solutions. We also have a program. We also have people to run those kind of programs related to grassroots and social innovation. Mr. Sharma, Coca-Cola has been the real story in terms of innovation uh, for a large, truly global uh, company such as yours. What does this, ep this permission to experiment uh, actually mean and also does it have a trickle down impact to local markets or innovations? We try and leverage global wisdom as you, as you called out rightly that we are a global company. But there's loads of local ideas that come through in our country. Probably some, some of the most innovative ones. So what we try and do is we try and harness the power in three ways. One is we can have some ideas and then we look at pushing those down and co-creating them with our ecosystem or building on them. That's one. Second is sometimes we just have a problem definition and we get our local large ecosystem to come and weigh in on those problems and suggest solutions, which mostly are innovations. The third way in which we deal with this is we, we have a lot of knowledge garnered over a number of years and we are experts in certain areas. So we try and share it liberally. Under the guidance of uh, Jayeshar, we recently signed a memorandum of understanding with the state of Telangana, where we are sharing with industries in Telangana how to go about doing solid waste management because we have considerable, exper considerable expertise in that area, how to do water uh, stewardship and water replenishment, again, an area of strength for us, and third, how do we build skills for 10,000 people in a way that they become employable? But Ms. Rohadgi, coming to you, uh, AB InBev has been a true champion of uh, incubator programs and in many ways has also been a global accelerator. What has been some of the roadblocks or positive experiences here in Telangana in particular or in India in general? Thank you so much, Maria, for that question. Innovation is at the center of the Sustainability 100, 100 Plus Awards that we recently launched here in India and are also soon going to launch uh, in Vietnam. And both programs are focused on driving innovation in sustainability and social entrepreneurship. Our target is to work with startups to build scalable solutions, addressing industry challenges across different stages of maturity. To answer the question on roadblocks, I think uh, two most important roadblocks that we have seen. The first one is on the lines of biggest challenge around the fact that sustainability related startups uh, is scalability. And typically the products are available at a premium and 
which makes it all the more important for these startups to understand uh, their mid to long term visibility on the incoming orders so that they can develop the belief and capacity to scale this operation. Mr. Khosla, you have been one of the largest container bottle manufacturers and you set up a 400 crore manufacturing unit in the government and by other establishment has been wonderful and today being a hub of innovation or today being a hub of it which is a synonymous word of the innovation is there so there is a there is a blooming culture or there is an innovation and creativity in the air in telangana mr Ra, what role have you played in driving the investments for the innovation ecosystem in the sense that we you have spoken about t hub 2.0 and what are the lessons that other states can replicate from Telangana? First is we have a Telangana government supported fund called T-Fund, uh, where we make early stage investments. Uh, we have close to, at this point of time, we have 235 startups in the building. And uh, at full capacity, we'll have close to 700 plus startups working out of the building. So obviously capital availability is a big uh, requirement. So what we've done is we've created something called a VC zone. The intent is to remove the friction make it a lot easier for entrepreneurs to be able to reach out to these VCs and parallelly, you know, the VCs to get exposure to all the innovation happening in the uh, startup ecosystem. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Mr. Srinivas Rao, uh, Jayesh Ranjan, Kamlesh Kumar Sharma, Rajesh Khosla, and also Tanvi Rohadgi. With that, it's a wrap from me. Welcome back to the Sustainability 100 Plus platform and I'm Ruchira Sharma. As you all know, we have been gearing up for the Sustainability 100 Plus awards to be conducted at the end of the year. And today, to learn how social entrepreneurs are playing a very important role in mitigating last mile sustainability challenges, I'm joined by two very special guests. And in fact, one of them is a jury member also. So on that note, let me introduce our guest for today. We have with us Ms. Seema Arora, CII and Mr. Bratton Roy, ABN Bev, India. So I'd like to begin with you, uh, Ms. Seema. The first question is that it is estimated that businesses are partnering with and supporting social entrepreneurs, and these could have a very positive impact on the lives of nearly 1 billion people around the world. So could you tell us a little about how CII is particularly viewing this opportunity? Thank you, Ruchira. I think social entrepreneurship has become a tremendous opportunity. It's an opportunity of not just changing lives, but impacting the economy in a big way. And especially today, as we witness a major push towards promoting and encouraging entrepreneurship movement in our country, both at the policy level and in action. So there is a huge opportunity. And at the same time, we are seeing growing high net worth individuals in the country who are willing to and looking to invest their money, philanthropic money in forms of grants and impact investments. And entrepreneurs are working in multiple areas, for example, working in introducing sustainable farming that helps conserve resources through organic products, use of various kinds of vermicomposting, uh, water ATMs, bicycle sharing apps. So there's like, you know, so many areas that social entrepreneurs are working towards making impact and changing the society. Could you tell us a little bit more about ABN Bev and how it has really gone about leveraging local partnerships for advancing the sustainability agenda that you're so keenly following? And I believe there are some really interesting stories that you could share with us. Sure, absolutely, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, I think uh, we have been working with a lot of partners, uh, you know, throughout our journey uh, here in India across, uh, you know, different projects that we work in and especially in sustainability. I think uh, any uh, social entrepreneurship work that any corporate does is incomplete without public, private and NGO partnership. And that's uh, that's key to, uh, you know, any model that you want to scale. And uh, we work with a lot of, uh, you know, NGOs and partners across the value chain and very interesting examples that I can possibly share that with you. For example, we work with CropIn, which is a satellite based crop operation monitoring module uh, in our agro program and this model is very unique and enables mapping of on-field operations like irrigation fertilize application digitally so uh, we use crop in and work very closely with the farmers as well we have also worked with a lot of startups uh, like for example craste to develop a 
you know, paper from agro waste that is essentially tree free paper. Uh, you know, we have worked with uh, startups like Arthos, which, uh, you know, in the, is in the process of developing a biodegradable plastic substitute, uh, which is equally important. But operations with real time visibility uh, on the environmental impacts. Moving on to my next question, knowledge and skill sharing are some of the foremost ways for large businesses to actually get involved in the entire, you know, social innovation sector. So how is CII particularly incentivizing or advocating businesses to look at these serious, uh, you know, and treat this as a serious business opportunity rather than just a CSR perspective? Yeah, firstly, my compliments for bringing this up that social innovation needs to be seen beyond the CSR lens. And we can see that now many companies uh, have been engaging with social enterprises, uh, enterprises, NGOs, and sharing their skills, as you rightly said, their know-how and also helping create better management processes systems. So far, most of this is done through the system of volunteering. And CIA, mm -hmm. for example, has a special initiative under its India at 75 mission and has developed a national volunteering grid that works as a self-sustaining ecosystem. It connects non-profits, community organizations to volunteers, volunteers from businesses, and it specially encourages professionals to volunteer skills and help build organizational capacity in nonprofits. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Bratton and Ms. Seema, for this very insightful discussion. As you all mentioned, we need to come together and join hands and continue to do our bit towards building a more equitable and sustainable future. Hello, and welcome to the season two of Sustainability 100 Plus Masterclasses. So, Asa, our very first question is uh, what is ESG investing? ESG investing broadly means using environmental, social, and governance factors to evaluate companies and countries on how far advanced they are with sustainability. By considering ESG factors, investors practically get a holistic view of the companies they back, which can help mitigate the risks and identify more opportunities. ESG investing is widely seen as a way of investing sustainably, where investments are made with consideration of environment, human well-being, and as well as economy. Let's try and understand what are the ESG risks faced by a business. So if I were to start with, let's start with the E. The E is about the way a company impacts and interacts with its natural capital, which includes the physical risks, such as biodiversity loss, increased risks of flood, and extreme weather events. When looking at this E, investors also face the transition risks, which could be risks related to transition to a low carbon economy. Moving on to the S in that ESG is about the way a company affects its various stakeholders groups. It could be either external or internal, like employees, suppliers, contractors, consumers, and others. So the negative social impacts can occur through direct operations and value chains. The S is typically including the risk of infringing of human rights of stakeholders, like for instance, limiting workers' freedom of association would result in a direct negative impact on workers' rights. And other examples could include discriminating based on gender or ethnicity when hiring or promoting employees, failing to monitor whether suppliers or contractors are paying a living wage to their workers, etc. The last part of that ESG being G relates to the two core components, corporate governance and business integrity. The first can really be seen as a way a company governs itself through policies, processes, and controls to achieve compliance and secure that transparency in its dealings. Business integrity, on the other hand, is about a way a company steers clear of corruption and bribery, avoiding openly engaging with political exposed persons, which may pose a reputational risk to the company's brand. Thank you so much, Asta, for sharing with us the insights on ESG investing. It was really a wonderful session and insightful one too. I hope our audience enjoy it and we'll come back soon with another masterclass session. Thank you.